to another listening presentation. We've got a special guest for you, Norman. As you know, Norman is one of our top performers. He's also a kappa. He has waxed the listening presentation, and that's why he is so successful. So take notes. Welcome to Norman and Ricovi. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Snyder. Thank you for inviting me into your property to do the valuation. We look forward to doing business with you very soon. Uh, thank you so much for coming, Norman, and thank you for making the time. I think I think it's imperative. We've done some I've done some preparation work, but I'd like for you to take me through the property. Okay, okay. Just show me exactly how many rooms you have, what are the features in your home, and what would you like <coughs> us to uh, promote in terms of the buyers that potential buyers that come through to the property. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so as you can see here, I've, this is my kitchen. It's newly renovated. I've just redone the whole kitchen. Um, I've just put in this, this island over here. Um, this is the lounge. We've got, here's the bathroom, two kiddies' bedrooms. This is the main bedroom. In the main bedroom, I have a walk-in closet. Um, and as you can see, here's my bathroom. I've just um, redone this whole bathroom out here. Um, okay, and if you come through here, this is the entertainment area, as you can see. Um, it's all new, top of the line, and here's the swimming pool that we've actually also just redone. So as you can see, Norman, we've really done a lot to this property um, in the last year. Miss Nida, would you would you prefer me calling you Geraldine or Miss Nida, Mrs. Nida? Um, you can call me Geraldine. That's fine. Geraldine, I think you guys have done an awesome job with the kitchen. Absolutely stunning. Tell me, who did your pool? Um, actually, my husband dealt with the people that did the pool, so I'm not 100% sure at this point. And have you had any problems with the pool since it's been done? No, no, how we long, haven't. How long ago has it been done? Um, we did the pool about nine months ago. Okay. Now, the reason I'm asking is, when we do the property disclosure, okay, which you would have to personally complete, there is a question there that asks if there any repairs have been done in the past three months, which you need to declare. Okay. But if it's been nine months ago and everything is running smoothly, we should not have any problems. All right, okay, that's good to know. Okay, you've got a beautiful home and I can see that you've got a lot of pride in your home, you've done a lot of work. Uh, there, it is very comparable to a few other properties that have reached the high values. But in my investigation of your property, I've noticed something. Your most recent municipal valuation is at 1,950,000 rents. Yes. Now, that, based on the averages in the area and what's the highest values fetched in the area in terms of the property sold, mm -hmm. your property is probably 650,000 rand overvalued by the municipality. Okay. Okay. What does that mean to you? That means that you are going to be paying an extra rateable amount. Okay. Which you should not be paying. All so right. I think if we start there, the first thing for us to do is to discuss how you're going to go about getting that reduced to the true value of the property. Okay. Okay. There's documentation that I will mail through to you after our meeting we'll, that you need to complete together with our valuation document that mm -hmm. we'll provide for you take it through to the municipal, municipality, lodge a dispute, and they will rectify it based on the information that they receive. Okay. Okay. You're going to ask me why do they calculate it at 1.950? That was going to be my question, yes. We have no answers. It is literally something that we have noticed going on throughout various suburbs where mm -hmm. people have been. We've had two-bedroom apartments being valued at 3.5 million rand. Okay. Any answer I give you would be an assumption. So okay. I cannot give you an answer as to why they've done that. But can I just quickly stop you there? So just tell me, the fact that the municipality is valuing it so high, how does that impact on the price I can actually sell my home for? Well, in terms of what you can sell your home, and remember I said to you, based on the averages mm -hmm. and what's the highest sales in your area, mm -hmm. That value that the municipality has given you mm -hmm. is probably 650,000 Rand overstated. Okay. Okay. The only impact that that number is going to have is what it's going to cost you every month. Okay. So, in terms of my rates that I have. Correct. To pay. Okay. All right. Okay. That's understandable. So, if you, uh, if we can just go through the numbers and we can have a discussion about the value of the property. Okay. okay. Yes, please. So, you've got a comparable valuation in the area, an average of a million and ninety-seven, ninety-four thousand rents. Okay. Okay. Your most recent sales in the area was number three T Rose. 
Okay, you are number 34. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's on the other end of your road. And you've got number 40 rows that went for 1,250,000 rand. Okay. If you do, if you just break that up, you're looking at an average about 1,200 rand per square meter. Okay. Okay. You, you bought the property in 2004, you paid 357,000 rands for it. That's correct. correct. And I see that you've taken a bond of 700,000 rands in 2007. Yes. What is your outstanding bond on the property? Um, I currently owe 560,000. And obviously the money that you've taken on the bond is what you've used to, to renovate the Yes, that's correct. Lovely. Well, like, you, you made a good decision there because you've pushed the money into the property. Yes, yes, that's, one. Okay. that's exactly what we did. Which bank? I see you with NetBank. You're still with NetBank? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. So, let me tell you more about Keller Williams. Please do. Okay. Please do, because um, actually Keller Williams is not very popular in this area. We hardly ever see any boards. So, yes, I'd definitely like to know more. So, Keller Williams arrived in the United States, and it used to be a, a trading facility, a okay. trading company that just happened to be in real estate. Okay. okay. We have, in South Africa, 24 branches throughout the country, and approximately 1,200 agents fluctuating on a month-to-month basis. Our branch, okay, which is KW Edenvale, we have 107 agents. Okay. Santon, which is still owned by Dion Trump, and he owns the uh, Benoni branch as well. Collectively, we have in the excess of 300 agents. What does that mean to you is when you list with us, your property is already multi-listed, not only to the 300 agents that we have within our three branches, but across the 1,200 agents in South Africa. Okay. But it's only listed once. It's okay. not listed by multiple agents making your property stale. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. In terms of our professional fee, which mm -hmm. is going to come up, so I'd rather bring it up right now. Oh, yeah, I have a very structured approach because you may meet your neighbor and we've sold their house and we've charged them 7.5% plus VAT. And you're going to say, but hold on. Norm's charging me 8%. We would not want to discredit ourselves or come across as we being deceitful. So we've structured our business that anything from zero to a million rand is 7.5% plus VAT. Anything from a million to two million is 6.5%. Anything above two million is 5.5 plus VAT. Friends, family, and repeat business gets 5.5%. Okay, okay, Norman, I, I hear you in terms of, of your commission. So I just, I just I, want to... I like to use it as professional fee. Oh, pardon me, professional fee. Um, so I just want to find out because obviously, do we know what kind of offers we will be getting? Is that going to be something that's going Absolutely. to be negotiable at that point? Or how... How will you assist me in that regard? Because um, I have interviewed two other agents before you. Um, you now the last one coming through, and after this, I'll make my decision. Um, so I just want to know if you are flexible in terms of that at all. Geraldine, there are three things that sell your property. Price, location, and condition. In terms of condition, your property is in very good condition. Okay. Price is where we've got control. Location, we've got no control. Now, what is the reason you are wanting to dispose of your property? Okay, so my kids actually go to school in Glen Marais, um, and it's just it's chaotic in the morning getting there and getting out of the area again. So we're actually looking to move closer to that side. Okay. So that's the reason why we're we so actually looking to sell. Back to your question, if we price the pro your property correctly in the marketplace, we will receive the correct offer on the property. Okay. Okay. In terms of why you will be paying us the professional fee that we deserve is we have a very aggressive marketing strategy okay. that is for the first six weeks of marketing your property okay and we are confident that based on our efforts and what we will put into the marketing that we will get you an offer within those six weeks okay if the property is priced correctly do you mind giving me more detail in terms of the marketing that you will be doing so firstly we get professional photographs done, we prep you, we walk through your property, we advise you on how to declutter the home, make it more attractive. Uh, the current buyers on the market, unfortunately, and, and, and I apologize for what I'm going to say, are very lazy. They have no vision. They want instant gratification. So 
they cannot see an empty room and decide on how the bed is going to go, which side they're going to put over a dressing table. And we will guide you through that process. We will set up an appointment where we bring through the professional photographer to do that. Okay. To take the photograph, do the video, we edit them, we send them to you for your approval prior to us sending it out to market. Okay. Okay. So that's the first step. Second step is we will be putting a for sale board outside because we never know where the buyer is coming from. Okay. Okay. Thirdly, we will set up a WhatsApp group for yourself, your husband, and anyone else that you would like onto the group. Okay. The group, the WhatsApp group is merely for communication. Not for you, for myself. I'm getting old and I forget things. But what it does, it keeps everyone in tune of what's going on with the property. We, we request viewing appointments via the WhatsApp group. We give you feedback on every single client that we bring through. Okay. okay. The next step is for us to have an open hour for all our agents that would possibly work in your area. It could be 10, it could be 20. All depends on availability of the agents and who works in the area. Okay. We have an open hour for them. There's nothing for you, for you to prepare except make sure the house is presentable. Okay. They do not take photographs, they do not uh, touch anything in your property and, and with COVID we take all the precautionary measures set out. They come through, they view the property, they give us their, their uh, feedback on the property. A beautiful property, a lovely kitchen, beautiful pool, um, you've done a stunning job on the home and they also give us a potential value of the property. Okay. We then take that information, we get an average and we provide that. What does that do for us is gives us an idea as to what the market is going to respond to. Okay. okay. They go off, but here's a trick. Each one of those people that have come and visited the property will probably have one client that they could then refer back to the property, bring them through. We have a culture in KW where we do not hold our property. Okay. We're not selfish with the property. Our priority is you, the seller. Just to, to sell your property at the shorter space of time at the highest possible value, market related. Okay. Okay. And each one of those agents that come through will then bring their clients through if they have any. Immediately, without even using the platforms of your property 24, IOL, private property, and our very own marketing platform, we would then have clients coming through. Okay. And that's all within the first six weeks. We've got that happening. We then market your property. We do a proper description. We take pride. Sometimes it may delay us because we're trying to find everything positive about the property in order to do the right up. Put your best foot forward. Okay. You're going to ask about how do we deal with other agents? We work with specific agents in the area. We do not work with all the agents because they're we want to keep your interests okay. at the top of our priority. There's certain agents we will not work with okay. because we understand how they operate. Okay. So we will then market your property to other agents external to KW. Okay. So remember what I said, we're not selfish. Our priority is you, the seller. Okay. We want to do what is right for you and okay. we will always maintain that. All right. Okay. Then it hits the property market. Mm -hmm. It goes onto all the platforms and we start receiving our responses. In addition to that, we have a huge database of buyers within KW. We send your listing out to all those clients mm -hmm. and contact them. Make, okay. make the appointments and bring those people through. Okay. okay. Show days are optional. We, we, we look at them and depending on the area, depending on the responses that we would get, we will schedule show days within the first six weeks. Okay. okay. Those dates are pre-approved with you. Okay. So we're not going to phone you on a Friday and say, uh, generally, you know what, my weekend's just free, freed up. Can I have a show day? No. Okay. Everything in our business is structured. All right. We will plan that up front. Yes, please. Okay. While we're on that topic, viewing times, what will be the most convenient for you? Um, so I'm currently actually working from home. Um, I'm available Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and between the hours of 2 and 5. 
So that will be the most suitable time for me. We are in winter, so I agree the five o'clock be the last appointment. Yeah. Yeah. What about Saturdays and Sundays? Um, look, Saturdays is our family day, so I wouldn't really want people walking through the property on a Saturday. Um, Sundays we could possibly do, but that would, would have to be in the morning. <clears throat> Between 9 and 11? Um, 9 is a bit early, let's say between 10 and 12. Between 10 and 12? Yes. So, I understand your family time on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. However, please understand, we want to work with you to sell the property. There may be an exception every now and again that we'll send through the request. Okay. Again, we can discuss that in terms right. of the Saturday. Is okay. that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll, right. I'll, I will obviously also try to accommodate where, where I can. So you guys send through the request. If we can do it, then... So that would be, be an exception to the rule yes, of... Now, we've mentioned Tuesday and Thursday. What yes. about Monday and Wednesday? Um, look, I've got a lot of meetings on those days. So that's why I'm actually saying that I can't really do those days. Um, so if we can try not to, not to have viewings on, the, on those days, that would be great. Fantastic. I think you're waiting for the numbers. Yes, can we can we get to the numbers? So based on the information that we've had on hand in terms of the properties that have sold, what we've already discussed, mm -hmm. number nine, uh, number three tiers went for 990, mm -hmm. number four tiers went for 1250. Mm -hmm. You paid 357,000 Rand. Yes. Okay, in 2004. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're sitting with an outstanding bond of... 560,000 Rand. Mm -hmm. okay. Your valuation, we would suggest you listing your property on the market for 1,350,000 Rand. Okay. Okay. Expecting offers from 1,250 up to what 1,299. The 50,000 extra on that 1.3 is our negotiation point. Okay. Okay. We generally will only use about 5%, 5 to 6% additional on the value mm -hmm. as a negotiation point. Okay. How do you feel about that? Look, I hear what you're saying and I mean, I, I see that you've done your research, but I mean, my property is in immaculate condition. We've spent lots, over and above the money we took out of the bond, we've spent a lot of money on this house. So can I not get more for my property? Geraldine, the, it will be the greatest of pleasure to get you 300,000 rand more than what the value of the property is. Mm -hmm. However, please understand also that the area and the suburb has a ceiling in terms of the highest values. Okay. okay. Also, we must be very cautious. When a client comes through, puts in an offer, they may love the house. We've got to be very careful. When it goes to the bank, the bank could also, at bond approval stage, approve the client mm -hmm. when they come and do the physical valuation of the property and go through the numbers they're going to say insufficient value on the property oh okay I so think we've got to guard ourselves against and that information then gets out mm. to, to, to clients yeah and you will never be able to do that and get oh, the higher okay. price so we've got to do the right thing okay the ethical thing in the business now, what I've done is I've actually prepared a document for number three tiers with some pictures of the property that sold for 1250. Okay. And as you can see, it has the three bedrooms that you have. Mm -hmm. It's got a beautiful pool, a modern kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's also okay. got a double garage and you've got a single garage. Okay. Okay. So I'm still saying with the quality of work that has been done on your property mm -hmm. and the fact that you've got almost 200 square meters more on your earth that we go in higher than the 1250. Okay. All right. Does it make more sense? Get, can yeah, you... it, it does. It does. Obviously, you know, you've got the numbers. Numbers don't lie. It's just, you know, it's, it's tough. You, you know, it's one of the common mistakes that a lot of sellers make uh, generally is they want to use their current property to fund their next project. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. It. Okay. it is not you or I that determine the price. It is the market. Okay. All right. That okay. makes a lot of sense. So, what I have done is I've also prepared some documentation for you. Uh, we'll, we'll leave this aside for now. We'll okay. talk about that now. Um, but there's a list of documents and a few things that I need. You don't need to make any notes. I will mail you with everything that we've discussed. Okay. But one of the first things you need to do is to actually contact your bank. Mm -hmm. and inform them that you are putting your property on the market. Okay. Okay. 
Why do I why do I need to do that? What well, is the There is always a cancellation fee for your bond. Mm -hmm. However, if you do not notify them, there are penalties on cancellation. Okay. And we want to prevent that from happening. Best advice for you is do it on mail mm -hmm. and keep a track record. We've had clients where we've listed their property and sold it three days later. Okay. And the bank says, well, you haven't notified us that you had put in the house on the market. And fortunately, the client had it in on an email. Okay, so okay. They, had, they could prove it. Okay. It's not our fault that we get it out at what we do and we sell a property in three days. Okay. It, it's But you've got to keep all those documentation available. Okay, okay. all right. So I use the very same checklist for both my buyers and sellers, however, okay. Some things are not applicable. A declaration by the seller, mm -hmm. okay, is what we discussed earlier on about the pool. Do you oh, remember yes, that? Yes, 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 I do recall. Okay. So it's a very, it's a series of questions. Okay. Simple questions. I am available at any stage. Should you not be clear to address them with you and assist okay. you? Okay. Please try not to have too many unsures, mm -hmm. as it gives the potential buyer insecurity. Okay. They want to start wondering, but the lady, the family's been here for 16 years mm -hmm. and they can't tell you whether there's any structural problems in the property. Okay. 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 Right. So that is for your completion. Okay. Okay. Then we have the mandate document. Now, we haven't discussed your options and you've said you've already met with two yes, uh, clients yes, yes. and I'm sure that all of them are pitching for your business. Yes, most definitely. Your so, best option. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple of options available to you. You can go with a multi-listing. Mm -hmm. Now be careful of the, the multi-listing. Okay. Because what happens is you've got 20, 30 agents that will come through. Each one of them will list it. Remember I said to you, KW has got 1,200 agents in South Africa, mm -hmm. but it's listed once. Yeah. When you put it onto a multi-listing platform, you will have 20, 30 agents coming through. Okay. All of them listing it at the same time. Okay. What does What does that do? Um, okay, can I just can I just quickly? I just want to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Um, if I do list with more than one agent, though, does that not mean I can attract more people that will come into the property and maybe sell it quicker? Not necessarily. Oh, really? Because you are no longer anyone's priority. Okay, so Julian, we on that portion where we need to decide as to how we're going to go forward, and I've brought along a solid excuse of mandates. Okay. Okay. So. Again, I'm going to reiterate. Okay. There's a couple of options that you have. On a multi-listing platform, you get one agent that signs an ex solemn exclusive mandate with you, mm -hmm. but it's on a multi-listing platform. What okay. does that agent do? They then advertise a the property. They invite all the other pro uh, uh, property practitioners in the area. 30, 40 of them will come to your property. Mm -hmm. They all take photographs. Okay. Okay. It's a whirlwind. It's an hour, but it's a whirlwind. They will just come in, take photographs. They don't know you. They don't know your needs. They don't understand what you've done in your property because mm -hmm. you have very little contact with them. It's only the agent that stands, waits there, and allows them to come through. Yeah. Those pr practitioners then publish your property. Now, all at once, 40 of them are advertising your property. Your property is going to become very stale very, very quickly. Okay. Yes, it does attract a lot of attention, but a lot of the agents would not want to split a professional fee. Okay. So what do they do? They bring clients through to your property and leverage off your property to sell other properties. Oh, really? So it is part of our marketing strategy, but it is only if we have not found you a buyer after the first critical six weeks. Okay. Okay. Because we do not want your property to become stale. Now, what stale means is that property 24 private properties have a ranking. Mm -hmm. When we list the property, it's scored out of 50. Okay. Okay. And we do our very best. We check that, we monitor that, and make sure that our listing is scored at the highest. Okay. So that it retains a high position on, okay. the, on the platforms. But as time goes, passes, mm -hmm. and the property hasn't sold, mm -hmm. you lose ranking. When you have 40 agents listing it all together, mm -hmm. it rapidly loses ranking, which means that it's not reaching clients. Okay, all right. Okay, Norman, I see you've got here this document. 
a sole and exclusive manager. Look, I've never sold a property before. This will be my first time. So can you just walk me through actually what this is? What am I, what am I agreeing to if I had to agree to this? 100%. Number one, it basically states the property details. Mm -hmm. You as the owner, mm -hmm. myself as your property practitioner. Okay. Secondly, it highlights to you the percentage that we agreed on. Okay. Now, if we look at where we're going to uh, pitch your property, mm -hmm. it's between the million and two million, mm -hmm. which we've agreed <coughs> that we do at 6.5%. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It also tells you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be putting a for sale board outside your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a legal and binding document. Okay. Okay. However, please know that once you've signed this with me, mm -hmm. you have become my private. Okay. okay, okay, I I understand all of that. So let's just see here what it says. So what happens if I'm not because now if I sign this document and I'm not happy with what you do, what options do I have? Does it say in here? Yes, it tells you that should you at any stage not be happy with the service that you've received from us, mm -hmm. that you highlight it with us, give us an opportunity to rectify the situation. Okay. Okay. And should we not be able to, mm -hmm. we will release you from this contract. Okay. All right. Okay. And how is that done? Is that done in writing or? It is, yes. Yeah. There okay. you go. Okay. Um, amendments, okay, to the cons uh, consensual cancellation of the authority shall not be of any force or effect unless reduced to writing and signed by both parties here too. Which All means right. basically, if we get to a point where you are not happy with the service, my apologies, uh, by Just mutual agreement, we will release you. Okay. However, if you cancel the mandate, mm -hmm. please note that you are not allowed to market the property for three months. And the reason we do this is that we do have unethical people in the world. Okay. They will get all the information from us, mm -hmm. find a buyer, mm -hmm. release us from the, uh, cancel the mandate, and then do a private deal. Okay. Okay. We've put in all the work. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, can I so, with you? I'm with you. It, being a uh, property practitioner is mm -hmm. very much like being your insurance broker. You have one insurance broker that guides you through your life in terms of your investments, your policies, making sure that you have sufficient life cover. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you would not want to have a dedicated pro uh, property practitioner? All right. Okay. okay. So this document, so it says sole and exclusive. Does So this means I can't even sell my own property no. if... Okay. All any leads that you may have, you send it through us. And the reason you will send it through to me, mm -hmm. okay, is that I will make sure that your your needs and your rights are protected at all times. Okay. Okay. There's lots that can go actually very wrong with a sale agreement. Okay. You know, the okay. legalities behind completion of a offer to purchase mm -hmm. needs to be one hundred percent. A simple thing like a spelling error or an expiration date. There's loopholes that could end up costing you money as opposed to making you some money. Okay. All right. Okay, Norman, I hear everything that, that you're saying. And I mean, I did obviously hope that I could get more for the property, but I can see that you have done your homework. And I mean, you've done, you've come with, with more information than the two previous agents have come with. So I am actually happy to then work with you. Um, I just wanted to just quickly ask you, so I bought this property before I got married. So in terms of paperwork that needs to be signed, how do I... How does that, what, what implications Generally, in have? terms of that, I have picked up that you did purchase the property on your own mm -hmm. and it does state that you were unmarried. Yes, that's okay. correct. How are you married? Um, we are married, we're not married in community of property. So, so you are anti-nuptial? That's correct. Okay. Anti-nuptial means that you can still sign all the documentation okay. on your own. Okay, okay, I just wanted to just double check Anything that. acquired, if it's, a, I'm assuming it's an nuptial contract with a crawl. That's correct. Okay. Anything acquired after the date of registration of your marriage, mm -hmm. okay, means that you'll have done together. Yep. Anything prior to that, you are still regarded as an individual. Oh, okay. All right. So okay. is this the only document? I mean, there's quite a few, plus quite a lot okay. going on here. Let's, 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 let's put just it put together. it in perspective. So yeah. firstly, we need to look at the mandate, mm -hmm. okay? In terms of the period of the mandate. Okay. Is there a set at, period for that? We, we calculate the first six weeks as our marketing. Mm -hmm. We then calculate 
six to eight weeks, okay, a maximum of 12 weeks thereafter mm -hmm. on the mandate. Okay. And say until registration. Give or take some delays, we generally go with a minimum of four months on okay. the assault mandate. All right. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I, I can do that. And just remember, as the seller of the property, you cannot be forced to accept anything but the full asking price of the property. Okay. So if we bring you a prop, uh, uh, an offer on the property, mm -hmm. it is our duty to bring you an offer irrespective of what the offer is. Okay. We okay, will guide so you through the process, we'll discuss it, we'll go through and sit down and go through each and every offer exactly the way we're doing right now. Okay. Unpack it, understand where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. We can give you advice, we cannot tell you what to do. All right, so that so that obviously I can yes. decide whether I'm happy or not. Okay. Okay. All Perfect. right. Okay. So it does state here, we've gone through that you are in Terenia, mm -hmm. situated at 34 uh, T rows. Okay, of number mm -hmm. I, your full name. Mm -hmm. We're advertising the property at 1299. Okay. Or 1350. Okay, I think okay. Let's, let's go 1350. Okay, expecting offers between 1250 and, yes. and that price. Yes, yes. Okay. We have given you the 6.5% because you fall within that range. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a commitment in terms of how we're marketing. Four months from today, would be uh, September, in the okay. 30th of September. Okay. In our marketing plan, we will have an interval at the six week where okay. we will have a schedule an upfront meeting, okay, where we'll come through and decide. It may never get to that. Let's hope it doesn't. To discuss and, yeah. the multi listing of the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, on that. It is a sold and exclusive, meaning that none of the other agents will be contacting you directly or dealing with you directly. Okay. They will all do it via me. We still retain the WhatsApp group and all communication goes via there as well. Okay. So if, if other agents do contact me, um, you refer them back just, to me. Okay. All right. I, will, I can definitely do that. That's not a problem. Okay. And then we basically sign here, witness, and that's it. You all will right. get a full pack, a copy of. The mandate mm -hmm. and your declaration that all you right. will complete. Okay. Okay. All right. And besides these two documents, what else do you require okay. from me? So on the checklist, I will need obviously your marriage certificate. Okay. Okay, confirming that you are married. I would need your entering up to a contract. However, not important right now. Okay. It is important to keep get those documents in place. Because once okay. we have an offer, we would need to submit that through the office. Okay. Okay. I need your most recent municipal bill, a copy of your ID, mm -hmm. and right now a copy of your husband's ID as well. Okay, okay. all right. Okay. Other than that, you need to get your taxes sorted out. Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure that your tax uh, returns are up to date and that you do not owe SARS any money. What are the implications if, if I do have a tax issue? So, the scenario will be very simple. We have an offer to purchase. Mm -hmm. The attorneys, and we'll get to that now, the attorneys that are doing the transfer of the attorneys will apply for a tax clearance. Okay. Okay. If the property is over 900,000 Rand, then there is transfer duty to be paid by the purchaser. Okay. Not yourself, by the purchaser. Believe it or not, SARS will issue that, but also issue an instruction to the attorney stating that Mrs. Naidu owes us 10,000 Rand. Okay. On registration of the property, mm -hmm. 10,000 Rand from the proceeds needs to be paid over directly to SARS. You oh, will wow. not even know that that instruction has been issued. Yeah, Jesus, I never even okay. thought of that. So, un unfortunately, SARS does their collection with property sales. Okay. They collect the transfer duty from the purchaser. They collect the VAT off our professional fee. They collect the business tax from KW Clockwork. Uh, they will be collecting the VAT from the transfer fees, mm. the bond registration fees. Okay. okay. So you see that once our professional fee comes to us, it's very diluted. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and we've got no control of us. I can't do that. So which is why they will query why we're charging that, why we're not charging that if we had to omit that from our. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. 
Any other questions thus far? Um, nothing that I can think of, but obviously you will be available. Can I maybe just Always. give you a call if anything Absol comes absolutely. up? Absolutely. Shall okay. we complete this documentation so yes. that I can start preparing yeah. the uh, the marketing plan, yeah. setting up the WhatsApp group, and then making plans going forward? Yes, please. Can okay. we do that? I, we, absolutely. Need, we need to get this part I have taken sold. the liberty. I have completed the documentation yeah. for you. You've gone through it. You agree with it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, I'm happy with it. That's where you're going to sign over there. Okay. okay. Shall we at this stage complete the declaration? We've gone through the house. I've picked up a few things. Okay. Okay. And we've got two options. We can agree to fix them yeah. on sale of property or you fix them prior to it. Um, look, I actually have to run right now. So do, can I do this and send it through to you? Absolutely or? no problem. Okay. I'm also going to leave this document okay. with you. It's got a list of all the documents that you can mail through to me. Okay. Okay. Right. What I will do in the interim... You've signed your mandate. I will get cracking on the marketing plan okay. and get ready for the photo photographs and everything else. All right. Okay. Is, there, is there any other cost to me besides your professional yes. fee? So once we have an offer to purchase, mm -hmm. once we have the purchases finance in place, either by bond or cash guarantee or an undertaking by an attorney that this is the amount of money that will come through, we can, we can then go ahead. You've got electric fence, you've got gas, and you've got... The electrical of the property mm -hmm. now by law you need to provide to the uh, purchaser an electrical compliance certificate okay. electric fence compliance certificate okay. if applicable which you do have yes, which do you're going to have it and a gas compliance if applicable and you have got that yes. so those are the three compliance okay what i can tell you is that over the years we have identified service providers that we trust that are reliable they are efficient and and cost effective. Okay. We will recommend them to you. Again, it is entirely up to you as to whether you want to use them or not. Okay. But those are the people that we will recommend to you. Yeah. Okay. And the same goes for the attorneys. Uh, in terms of the transfer, it is up to the seller to decide which who uses the uh, which transferring attorney to use. Okay. We have built relationships with a few that we use in various different areas. However, in your area, it would be nail attorneys. Oh, right. Now, we've worked very closely with them. And yes, we can do it with any attorney. However, when you have a relationship with an attorney, and especially mm -hmm. the, the, pro uh, profession, the property pro uh, practitioner, we tend to have a direct line that we can keep track of. We, can, we have a regular two-week meeting with them to go through and, and okay. all our files, which means that we've become a priority in their lives yeah. as well. And the process takes so much Okay. This. All right. So you can you'll be able to assist we'll them guide. again. Right. I must tell you, with regards to the service providers for your compliance certificates and the attorney, we can only make a recommendation. It is entirely up to you to decide. All right. All right, Norman. Just quickly before you go, thank you so much for your time. Um, so at which we obviously need to start looking for a house now in Glenmarie. When at which point do we start doing you, that? You jump the gun. I was going to ask you. When can we set up some appointments? Okay. Okay. But before we set up the appointment, what I'd like to do, Geraldine, is do a pre-qualification for you and your husband. Okay. Okay. So that when we go out to market and start searching for a property, mm -hmm. that you make an informed decision and not go and make an offer on a property for two and a half million when you only qualify for two million. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recap our meeting, send you a copy of the mandate. Mm -hmm together with a reminder on the list of documents that I need, mm -hmm. but also send you the pre-qualification documents that you can complete. Okay. You're all sending me your ID and your municipal bill together with, with the completed documents. Mm -hmm. Cost you nothing, but it gives you a little bit of power in your hands that you've been pre-qualified. All right. But now what happens if, if we find a property before we've sold this one? What will happen in that case? Okay. When you find a property, and, and it's going to be me that finds you the property, we then put in an offer subject to the sale of your property. Okay. You then get 60 days in which to sell your property. Oh, so that is possible. Yes, it is. Okay. Very okay. possible. Okay. All right. However, we do not advise clients to do that, especially mm -hmm. in this current market yeah. where properties are scarce and they are selling quite quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, We'd like for you to actually have something firm in your hand and say, my property is already sold. Okay. It is pending transfer and registration. So we put it in as closed 4.2 on our offer to purchase that says 
property already sold. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Norma. You can. Um, thank you for Jerry, everything. Thank just you for remember, your time. We are online. We are available to you at any time. Try and keep it to about 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I try to get some sleep. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for trusting us with the sale of your property. Thank you. It just stopped by <laughs>
also remember, you, in, in all your dealings with your clients, you always come back to the culture of KW and the principles that we build our business on. And one of those principles is win, win, win. Mm -hmm. If you are going to stand fast on your professional feet without any room for movement, are you allowing your seller to win? Or are you the only person that wants to win? So everything that you do in your business has to come back to the culture and the principles that KW is built on. I understand what you're saying because the the, uh, the higher the price of the property goes, the better also the amount of the commission that comes mm -hmm. to me is. So there is always the possibility of creating that catch of win-win. Mm -hmm. But remember, Norman also said that he's used the model that found that works for him. And that's why he's a kappa, it's not the other way around. It's not uh, because he's a kappa, he's given a leeway. He's a kappa because the model that he uses works, and that's why he got to be a kappa. Does it answer you? Yeah. Yeah. Can I be quite cheeky? Yes, you can. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Hi, I'm you know. Always well. Um, you come across very confident, and you might intimidate some sellers who are not or fake. And I'm saying this lovingly and objectively. So they might give in to you, but now that's fine. But if you get another sort of arrogant seller that would say to you, excuse me, I've got other agents that can offer me the same good professional advice at 6%, how would you overcome that? Michelle, um, firstly, I am arrogant because I am very good at what I do. No, but it's um, a good comment, but you might intimidate I, a new person. I think if you, you are 100% right, no. okay? You do get people that are a lot more arrogant. There'll always be someone that's more intelligent, a lot smarter, a lot of better, much better looking than I am. Um, and, and they are those people, yeah. okay? And I can't answer that to you directly and give you a, a direct answer. Mm -hmm. One needs to go through those instances and experience it and know where to back off mm -hmm. and respond without emotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, now the other agents are offering me, uh, offering me 4% commission. Granted. Are those other agents sitting here in front of you with an offer? Simple. I think that's when you go back and you show your proven track record of Absolutely. Of Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So just remember, we, you know, we, we meet clients that when you get there, you can immediately get a sense of how to approach the situation and how to do your evaluation. Mm -hmm. There's no two. The exact same. Yeah. You you will encounter people that are soft, and you need to give them time. And your one hour slot becomes a two hour slot. A tip: when you're doing your CMA, have a look at the age of the person. Mm -hmm. If the person is young, tech enabled, uh, when you have a discussion with them, try and get as much information prior to you having the meeting, mm -hmm. so you know how to approach the situation. Young, tech-enabled, uh, qualified person, you think they want to hear you waffle? No. you to the point, you get your business done, and you get out. Mm -hmm. However, you've got someone that's 75 years old, all the time in the world, okay, <laughs> has recently lost the spouse, retired, and now looking at selling and downscaling. What do you think is going to happen on that particular listing presentation? They have to have a They might even cry. Yes. 100%. 100%. Does that answer, Michelle? Give you a bit of an insight on that? It's, it's, it's a difficult one because, is, you know, yeah. as you know, we meet so many different people. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, I suppose you just could engage it as you go. Yeah. Look, um, we, we've, we've all had 
those instances where clients have been rude to us, mm -hmm. have insulted us, mm -hmm. have been arrogant and, you know, blatantly said no. But what I meant when I said this now, I think you've got a good balance when I, I wasn't being harsh. No, no, it I wasn't taken. You have, a, you have a nice way about you, but you're firm. And I think that's where I need to maybe improve on myself. Yeah. And to close harder. Yeah. Um, and I'm too soft, like giving too quickly. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's the best way to overcome that, Michelle? No. It's preparation. And it's preparation. There's so many agents in my area, as you know. Yes. There's so many agents in that area. How fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they just make us look so good, don't they? Oh, absolutely. And remember, when you prepare, guys, and you've got it in front of you, you, you are talking facts. And like Michelle, like what you're saying about a Norman, yes, it's calm. You say that, uh, that it almost can be intimidating, yeah. but the most important thing that you can see, and everybody can see, the way he handles himself is confidence. <laughs> and any type of something, a said of what's a confident person yeah. to start no, authority, because they know they got to do the job. Okay, but now on the other side, we do have a, not all of us, but a lot of the agents are perceived as being deceptive and things like that. What do you deal, how would you deal with a seller that would distrust a lot of asset agents and want to do their own work, even though you give a wow presentation? You know, you can walk by, I've really done my best, and you know you're intentionally serious and, and honest, but the seller still wants to go through four or five series of agents. Michelle, respect, <coughs> respect that seller's decision. Okay. Okay, allow them the opportunity. But before yeah. you leave, yeah. Mr. Seller, when can I follow up with you? You put it in your diary yeah. and you do the follow up and you always reiterate, I'm available to assist you with any of your questions that you may have. And you do not leave your listening presentation with? You yeah. take it away. Because I promise you, I all those other four parts, it's even better for you because no one has got the listing presentation that Keller Williams has. No, I never leave my listing. Never leave it. So I, I know that a, l a lot of the teachings say, leave something behind because it stays in the drawer and what have you. By hard learnings, guys, we have found that exactly what Anya says. They will take your information, okay? They get a hold of their buddy that is an agent and say, I've done the desert here, list, this prop list my property. Mm. It's happened to me. Mm. It's happened on number, number five, Tulma Lane Road. I did a presentation for Richard. We, he had done his homework on me prior to me getting there. He knew exactly which houses I've been selling, how many percent contribution I had in the air, in the suburb. He knew everything. And I left him, I made the fatal mistake. And yes, we do make mistakes. Yeah. I left him my information. Understanding that, listen, this is the gentleman, this is, this is an honest guy. I am listing this property. Lo and behold, guess what happens? It's listed by Remax. Uh -huh. Mission. What did I do? Sorry, Yanya. Okay. What did I do? Oh. <laughs> I picked up the phone. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? I see that you've listed the Remax. Uh, and it's a great company to list with. Just in order for me to improve this, my services, <laughs> I would like to know why you chose them over me. Mm. I wasn't upset. I removed the emotion. Okay? And, and if you don't believe me, ask me. There's times where I've got to say, I'm not making this phone call now. I need to calm down. First. Yeah. yeah, of course. Okay? We are emotional. And, and guess what was the response? Yeah. Ach, Norman, you know what? There's absolutely nothing that you did wrong. But it's a friend of my sister's. Oh. It happens. Guess what price they listed it for? Exactly what I told him we should list for. 
Guess who sold the property? You. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I wish to add also to what uh, your question. You will overcome, I think, the, when people are set past of pricing and the trust factor. Once you've got a your customer services rock star letters that I always say, guys, dealing with clients, ask them to rate your service. Very quickly, you show somebody in writing what you meant and how you changed somebody else's life. Do you think they're going to mistrust you? Mm -mm. So you should start building up your portfolio of evidence of what you do out there. Because I promise you, what you do out there, nobody else does. Just on that note as well, you'll find that the same sellers that did not that went with somebody else. Remember, this isn't a script, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. You're building your business, it's a marathon. You're not looking for immediate gratification and short term rewards. This is a long term building business. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. <coughs> but as soon as that seller experiences somebody who gives them bad service, <coughs> they're going to come back to you. And it has happened as well, where people haven't sold their property because they opted to go with other agents. Mm -hmm. And they called you six months later and they said, listen, we want to go in now. We prepared to listen. They listed their house at one, one, two point, they wanted two million in their pocket. Told them, this is unacceptable, you're not going to get it. We eventually got them to list their property at 1595. Wow. After months mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just a waiting game and you're not going to win everything. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So but those that you do win, you make people do better. But Anya, would I, would I get a, a recommendation letter from a, a seller that I never got to sell their property? The reason I'm saying, let me clarify for you. Um, there's a property that I listed in Orange Grove. There were about four, um, uh, no, three agents. Um, I think I took over, let's say, about four or five buyers through. Um, they were just not happy about one or two things, you know, with the property. Um, she sent me a message, I think on Wednesday night. She says, Rebecca, just to let you know, the property has been sold by another agent. However, out of the three agents, you were my best. You know, I would recommend you any time. Um, I would have loved for you to sell my property, but I thought it is gone. But thank you so much. You were so professional. You were on time. You were... So I didn't sell the property though. But the matter. It's still, it's still, it's still a services rendered recommendation. Yeah. Rebecca, can I ask you a question? When that client has anyone that she knows that's selling a property or is looking for a pro uh, property practitioner, who is she going to recommend? You. You. Absolutely. Don't feel bad. Ask for the recommendation. Always ask. Ask for it. Okay. We, we had a client, we sold his property and he disappeared. He went away to the UK. Almost a year and a half later, sends me a mail. Says, Norman, I forgot to send you your referral letter. Yeah. <laughs> a year and a half later. So that just tells you that you want to be top of mind.